Tis I. Hey everyone, glad to see you back, glad to see you looking fresh, and today I wanted to talk about a show that came out a little bit ago that kind of seemed to fly under a lot of people's radar, and it's from the Pokemon Company, and I don't know, I thought it would be a lot bigger than it ended up being, but I'm going to give it a little bit of a spotlight today, I wanted to talk about Pokemon Concierge which is a cute little four-episode miniseries, I guess is the best way to describe it. It's on Netflix. It is a stop-motion animation, and it's adorable. It's simply so cute that every single episode, oh, there's only four. That's like the biggest issue with this show is it's so short. It does feel like a little, not really a movie, because all four episodes do kind of tell their own little contained story. So it is basically just a miniseries. But you can kind of watch it as a movie, a little, like, not even a full 80 minutes movie. It's very quick. And sit down, enjoy it, and it's it's bright, it's colorful, it's, it's everything you want in a cutesy show like this. And the thing that really spoke to me about it, the main character, Haru, she was, you know, going through this thing where she was, like, trying out a new job for the first time and being able to go through a whole new experience that she never felt before and I'm kind of going through something similar to that right now a little bit of that like fear of the unknown not knowing if it's really gonna work out I think watching the show like helped ease my mind a little bit like obviously I'm not gonna be able to be a concierge at a Pokemon resort that'd be the dream job for everybody but in my own life in my own experiences being able to see like that little bit of a mirrored reflection, I was able to really relate to this show and just that anxiety of something new, something unknown, and it really working out, I think was really, really, really helpful for me right now. So on top of this show being adorable and cute and just an enjoyable watch, it also really like spoke to me on a personal level. That being said, if we take my personal experience out of the equation, I think the show also just simply works on its own merits, on its own story. And stop motion is an animation style that I highly respect. I really, really respect the time and effort and love that gets poured into this media. Unfortunately, I typically find it a little bit, I don't say uncanny, but I never have loved how it ends up looking a lot of the time. I always end up being like, oh, well, it's really impressive, but I don't know, something about how the mouths have to move, something about how it's always a certain smoothness because like there's no motion blur when it comes to other like animation or even especially live action, motion blur is a thing that just happens. When things move, you, your vision blurs it a little bit. Like that's just how it works. But it's stop motion because it's legitimately a certain amount of shots per second and then just played back in succession there's no blur because it's still images. I mean, that's how film works, obviously, but this is the, the purest like form of how it works. You know what I'm saying? Like a bunch of still photos snap together, typically 24 snap together per second, and that's what film looks like. But this show worked for me. It took me a little bit because like the mouths don't line up, but I've had experiences with that before. I've watched it in English. Maybe if I watched it in Japanese, it wouldn't be nearly as a problem, but I watched it in English. Um, mostly because, I mean, that's my native language, but also because Pokemon have different names in other languages. So it'd be a little bit weird to not hear Psyduck be called Psyduck, it'd be called something else. I don't know what the Japanese name for Psyduck is, but it'd be something else. So I, I do want to speak on Psyduck a little bit because I, I love the little guy. I've always liked Psyduck and his little journey in this show. I, I like how he's becoming like one of Pokemon's like main stars, which I, I love because I've always liked Psyduck. I remember back when I played uh, Diamond and Pearl, uh, everyone had the classic team and you had your starter and you had Star Raptor, Luxray, Garchomp, Lucario. A lot of people had Floatzel. Um, instead of Floatzel, I had Golduck. So basically the same team, Floatzel and Golduck, kind of serve the same purpose. I mean, Battle Prowess, he's not the best. He's never been the best. Even when he was introduced, he wasn't the best in his own generation. So it's always been a little bit like an uphill battle for him. So I really hope that maybe one day Psyduck and Golduck get a third evolution, make him the water psychic type that he deserves to be. Just going back to Psyduck himself, like he was great in this. I, like, I used him in... A mystery dungeon on the switch and i loved him in detective pikachu like 
it's just been great. I love, I've always loved Psyduck, and I always will continue to love Psyduck, and it's been great seeing him become a little main player, kind of like Pikachu and Eevee. And Pikachu's in this show, and he's amazing in this show. Like, he has a great episode uh, all about Pikachu, and it's it's one of the most heartfelt, heartwarming episodes. Like, it made me tear up a little bit. It's absolutely lovely how this show handles it. And every single Pokemon in this feels right at home. Like, everything is, like, nailed to how you'd expect them to act. Like, Snorlax, Dragonite, Metagross, Wingles, even, like, Pansage, Panpour, and Pansy are all in this, and I, I really like them as well. Pokemon that I've never really cared about all that much work in the show. I really think they're great. I think one of the most fun things about this show, too, is it made me have my Netflix icon. I can be a little Snorlax now, and that's hilarious. I always love Snorlax. He'll always be one of my favorites, so just seeing the super serious ones next to my other family members, and then Snorlax, for me, it speaks volumes, and that's that was a blast. A little additional thing that this show was able to do, and like I was saying, like, this show, simply, simply cute, and I, I just wanted to give a little video here to talk about it and to, like, express my appreciation for something like this, something out of Pokemon's normal wheelhouse. Like, I would love if this became a its own little franchise, kind of like how there was the Ranger games and then the Ranger showed up in one of the movies, or, I don't know, Conquest never really did much, but, like, Snap... Um, Todd showed up in the anime and stuff like that. Like, the integration has always been there. Detective Pikachu obviously has his own games and then has his own movie. So I would love it if Pokemon Concierge became, like, its own game or something like that. Like, a cutesy Animal Crossing style, maybe, game where we just hang out with Pokemon, solve little problems, like, it's cutesy, cozy. I would love that. I would. I think that would absolutely be something that could really really work uh, i've seen you know plenty of fan images and about pokemon in animal crossing already because it just seems like a natural fit especially when back on the 3ds there was like zelda characters already it seems like pokemon would be an obvious addition to that kind of world where you know there's already a ton of cute creatures that we love to hang out with so let's hang out with them in a special way this spinoff just existing as its own little show is great but I think it could be something bigger and something more. And I'd obviously just love to see more of this show if it did well. I got a feeling it, it didn't do, like, amazing. Because, like I said, I haven't heard anyone talk about it. I heard a little bit of a hype going into it. Came out, and I heard literally nothing about it. Since then, I've done, like, digging. And I've read people's comments and reviews on it and stuff. But up to this point... There was not much. Have you seen Pokemon Concierge? If not, you should get Netflix and check it out. I think it's absolutely lovely. If it seems like something you'd be interested in. If not, then it's probably not. Like, if you want Pokemon just for the battles, then this isn't for you. But if you love the world, if you love uh, the cutesy, cozy feelings of what this kind of story can give you, then by all means, check it out. And yeah, that'll about do it for me today. Thank you so very much for watching. And as always, like this if you like this. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you at some point.